Mulefin Segi, do you remember him? Yes. He has come out and done an interview with Itiski Times and essentially blamed Bobim Taung, Kezam Taung Jr. and the management of Kaiser Chiefs for his untimely dismissal from Kaiser Chiefs. We'll go through the interview and what he said to Velile Mnyandu and look at what his points were and if they were valid because some of the things that he says are very valid but some of the things that he says are a bit shaking so let's talk about it hello and welcome to Coast nation fan tv i am pelo i am your host and this this is offense meet and talk about kz chiefs i'm a football club so i'm living sake coaches case coached kz chiefs rather for 13 games he lost six of those games he drew three of those games and he won only four and not to mention that he was knocked out of the MTN 8 and the Carling knockout. Wow. Talk about a horrible start. And before we even talk about the horrible start, we need to talk about the fact that when he was appointed, we were so mad. We were so mad because before he was appointed, there were a lot of talks about Nazareth Dinah becoming 2 Ks Chiefs. And we're expecting a lot because we're talking about a coach who had just won a back-to-back, back-to-back trebles in Tanzania. And we're expecting him to come to Chiefs. And our management, our lovely, lovely management, they fumbled the deal. And then Nazrat Dinabi ended up getting out of those talks. And then he didn't continue with, the, with Chiefs. And then to save face, because Chiefs were in a process and it was already in public that they want to change a coach, they used Mulifin Segi as a guy to save face and say, he's already used to the system, so it's not going to be a big deal. It's fine. And then they did that, and obviously it ended up being the way it was because it didn't succeed. And now he says that when the season started, because obviously it was already on the back foot, I had to give that context that a lot of us did not approve of that of him being appointed as the coach because we're like, what has he won? He hasn't done anything with Bafana Bafana. We have access to every player in South Africa and playing abroad who are South Africans. What is he going to do with Chiefs who do not have all the quality that you need? You know, we talked about all of those things. So I was already on the back foot. And then to add, what's this thing? To add insult into injury, he starts the preseason friendlies and then it doesn't win. And those friendlies were televised. And he says after that happened, he needed to be a leader and make the team believe. And this is where a, 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 a source of sorts told me that the players were kind of frustrated with the fact that management just switched up on them and changed and moved from Zwane to Nsegi like that because they already had something going with Zwane and then for the management to just all of a sudden up and change the things, it was difficult. So the mentality of the players was already affected, right? And now for Nsegi to come in and not do the things in the first two games or in the prisons, prisons and for them to not believe in what he was doing, for him to say he was trying to make them believe, it's clear that he couldn't achieve or didn't achieve that because in those preseason friendlies, it was flat. The matches were just flat. We went and played against Chipa. The game was flat. Then the second game of the league, we were playing against uh, Sundowns. The game was also flat. And then by the magic of Castillo, we won the MTN 8 quarterfinals. But the team just didn't look like an enthusiastic team and a team that believes that we can go out and win. So him saying he had to be a philosopher and a leader to make players believe, it's clear that it didn't work. And it makes me believe those rumors that the players were frustrated with the decision of the management to maintain the coach because clearly they were not reacting well. And the second one, he says that when he first got attacked, that was in Bombela, was in Bombela, I didn't even see that because I've been, I was at the game, but I was out already trying to interview people and people were throwing things at him. And he says that he doesn't understand that. That was on the 20th of August, if I remember correctly. So yeah, it was on the 20th of August. So we went to, 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 to Mpumalanga and he says that the team played a good match. I mean, I mean, I don't know. He says he didn't understand why the fans threw objects at him because we played a good match. Okay, here's what I will say. I don't understand why they threw objects at him 
because like why it was too early i don't promote throwing objects at any point in time because i don't promote violence however for him to say he didn't understand that because we uh, had played a good match i was there i watched the entire game go stadium front seat watching everything that was happening there was nothing good about that performance ets galaxy they just post us i think the entire first half the second half was slightly better than the first but it was just still not as good because Tears Galax were dominating us, which is not a good look. And also, it seems like for him, he's taking by match by match basis. But if you remember, I already gave you context that before he was even appointed, we're not happy. He got appointed, he loses in the pre in the in the in the preseason. He also draws against Chipper. He loses against Sundowns. He wins on the last minute against Cape Town City, and then he comes back. He loses to TS Galax. So at that point, Chiefs had won only one game and lost one game and had drawn with TS Galax with, with Chipper United. So this is not about one match, one isolated incident, but this is accumulative frustration. And that is why it's going to be difficult for any coach to come to Chiefs and do things properly. Because right now, I, I, I've i seen you, Tabang uh, Leviane, when you say that you don't think it's a good idea, we should give coaches time. The problem right now, guys, the problem that we have is that we're not dealing with an isolated incident of one coach where we're saying, okay, this coach sucks. But it's the frustration of the past eight years coming out on one coach because for me one if i see kevin johnson employing anything that remotely looks like he's being defensive or he's a coward i will i just give up on him because i'm like i've seen this movie before i've seen baxter do this i saw this did it, this didn't end well with for 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 baxter if i see the coach encouraging kicking the ball i'm like oh my god if we had played the ball under minton because we got figured out towards the end of the season and then our tactics of crossing the ball all the time wasn't working. So if the team is crossing the ball right now, I'm like, oh, this again. So I get triggered because of the emotional damage. Emotional damage. Hiya. The emotional damage that I've suffered in the past eight years. So for him to think that playing one good game and still losing it will buy him grace, that will not buy you any grace with us fans. What will buy you grace with Kaiser Chiefs fans is winning games and playing well or at the very least just win the game then we'll complain about how you perform because i also am a big fan of continuity i don't care and then the next game you play bad because i saw a lot of people are like yeah hello john Cini. why are you criticizing john Cini? we won the game but can we replicate that in another match the, if the answer is not yes, then we have a problem. Then I can't be celebrating a 1-0 win that we can't replicate in our next game against Polokwane City. You get me? So that is why I always say we can celebrate the win, but also look at the holes that were there in the team. So for once I get to say we played well, I really don't understand. What I really don't understand is the fact that 76% of you are still not subscribed to the channel. 76 percent that's a lot but guys please do subscribe to the channel this channel we want to grow it and also if you want any uh talk uh, 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 if you want us to talk about case achieves and you're interested in content about case achieves and you want to see more videos i upload videos every single day monday to sunday i don't miss and if you want that kind of content please do make sure to subscribe and like the video to help me reach more people like you and then he says that supporters who didn't believe in the decision are the ones who actually is the reason why they attacked him. And once again, it links to what I said in the introduction of this video, that the fans who were frustrated and were throwing things at him, I was frustrated, but I wasn't just go, well, I wasn't going to do that. I do agree, Uguti, it's because people never believed in Zegi to begin with. And me, enough for one, I was even called a custard eater on Twitter because I said uh, I can see some improvement. The team is now passing two or three passes. We are rotating the ball a bit more. We are keeping the ball a bit more. So I was like, yeah, that is happening. That is okay, right? But the problem is it was just not have. It didn't have an end product. We are just playing the ball around and didn't do much. And at that point, I was just hoping 
that Mlifin Segi, please prove me wrong. Please prove me wrong. Make me look like a plumber. Because initially I was like, no, you are not a good coach. Please prove me wrong. And it didn't. So at that time, I was giving him benefit of the doubt and saying, yeah, he's now starting to prove me wrong because he's now getting the team to play the ball and combine for a few more touches. But then it, there was no end product. So what's the use? Because at the end of the day, if you're going to keep the ball, you can keep the ball. Jose Moreno even said they can keep the ball. They can take it home when they like, if they like, because he used to beat Man City with Tottenham so much. And even with, you, with Manchester with Manchester United, even with Chelsea, he knows how to beat these big teams because he doesn't care how much they keep the ball. As long as he gets one chance and he scores that goal and he continues defending, the point is he wins. And Unse was just keeping the ball, rotating it around and doing nothing with it. And because of that, that caused more frustrations. And it made people say, you know what, we were right, this is a plumber. And because of that, look at where he is now. It's unfortunate, obviously, that he got attacked. Next up is that the second attack, which was against Supersport, again in Polokwane, I even posted that video when I was in Polokwane. Uh, he says that it was a good game again. That was the game where there were a lot of passes that were played. But there was also a game that brought a lot of questions about our setup. Because in Supersport, I, I did an analysis, you can go check that of that video. In Supersport was just camping in their own half. And they got one goal and they continued defending the rest of the game. And the, the most effective thing is they let the ball have, they let us have the ball in wide areas. When we cross the ball, they have height advantage. But yet we kept, we kept on trying uh, we kept on trying those crosses, which was never working. And we're moving the ball so slow, and yet we are going to stand up here and say, oh, the team played well because we had more more touches than, than super sports. It doesn't work like that. If you have position, you must do something with it. So he says, he also, that one, we had a good game, so he didn't understand. I'm like, what do you mean we had a good game? We kept the ball more. That does not necessarily mean that's a good game because you can have the ball the entire 90 minutes and not score, and the other team has the ball on at a time, and they score a goal, one goal. It doesn't matter. No one's going to care about performance because that means you are so useless that you had the ball for 90 minutes, but you couldn't create the chance because other people just quit and they say, you know what, we don't care about controlling the ball. We don't care about controlling the game. What we do care about is causing harm when we have the ball. So I would rather, even at this point, have a coach who's going to be effective with the ball and not necessarily a coach who's just going to have the ball for vibes. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't like that. And then he concludes his interview by saying that this thing of fans throwing things at the coach has nothing to do with quality of the coach because it also happened to beat Omsiman. I don't like... It didn't say Pitom Simani by name, but he said that it happened to one of the best coaches in South Africa, which is Pitom Simani, obviously. To which I think, come on, dude. You can't really be competing, com competing, co oh, what? What's the word? Comparing yourself with Pitom Simani. You know why? Because Pitom Simani moved to Sundowns after achieving things at Super Sport. That's the difference. The Sundowns fans were frustrated and they hated him because he wasn't getting results there, but the management could stick with him because he had a proven track record. But when it comes to Nsek, he didn't have any proven track record. So even the management couldn't stick with him because there was no proven track record. And they also knew that they were just trusting him and hoping that he would turn this thing around. And he couldn't. And obviously, the way that it ended with him getting objects thrown at him, I will never condone that. But at the end of the day, he was never the right coach for Kaiser Chiefs. It's an unfortunate thing that this has happened, but he rightfully pointed out that all of these things is because the supporters did not believe in the decision. Nsegi did not make the decision to become the coach or did not initiate the decision to become the coach of Kaiser Chiefs. But the management went to him and offered him the job. So they are the ones who actually decided to bring him and make him the head coach. So the fans were questioning the decision. And knowing that the management will not listen to fans when they complain, the only way that the fans think they can be heard 
is by vandalism or trying to do some violent things, which is obviously not great, which is exactly why the management should learn. I wouldn't say to listen to the fans because a lot of fans don't know what they're talking about, but they should at least understand what their fans want. Fans want to win. And at this point, I know I'm going to sound like a hypocrite. If there was a coach who's coming to Kaiser Chiefs and is going to win and play horrible football, I know fans would, wouldn't care. I have fans right now. I know a lot of people look my comment section. I want to ask you this. How many of you would take back and Smith and Dorp to Kaiser Chiefs with the squad that we have? Because I know a lot of people want Smith and Dorp because they know that he played winning football. I wouldn't want him to come to Chiefs because I feel like when he got figured out, then he stopped dishing out results for Chiefs. And also, there was COVID in the mix, but I would rather have a coach who's going to be effective and win matches for Chiefs to kind of get us out of the slump. The problem is with continuity in that because that coach is going to play effective football and not necessarily beautiful football and then we'll start complaining about that. But I know that a lot of people will say they do not care sometimes about the performance. They just want the win. But what are your thoughts? Let me know down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, remember, equals Alpelumoy.